Brian Belsky joins me. He's not in Naples this morning. Oh, no, 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 no. He is next to me in New York City, ain't you? Oh, it's amazing. It is a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful day. I ran the park last night at the exact wrong time. It was about 150% humidity. <laughs> <laughs> and then this morning I wake up and I walk here. It's so beautiful out. I should have yeah, done see? it this morning, but I had to come here and see you. Oh, you did indeed. Yes, what a guy. You. What a guy. Right. Let's get on with it, shall thank we? Thank you. You let's... think we've already seen a bottom for the market, don't I, you? I think there's a very good chance, you know, uh, when everybody says that we need to see capitulation, I'd probably go the other way. And everybody seems to be convinced that we need to see this massive type sell-off, um, not too dissimilar to what we endured in March of 2020. No market is exactly the same as a prior market. You can look back at history. Sure. Uh, you know, you know the famous line. Uh, but at the end of the day, we really think that when they took energy stocks out two weeks ago, and when you take out the generals, uh, meaning the last kind of semblance of real strength, not only in terms of fundamentals. Stu, but in terms of price performance, that's when the market was bottoming. And so I, I really think there's a very so good that chance. that was it. I think that's it. I really think there's a very good chance that was it. And then everybody now is picking on earnings, yep. right? right? And so from our models, we see that earnings are actually still going up. And nobody believes this, but on a bottoms-up basis, uh, numbers are still trailing higher. And so you saw yesterday what the banks did. Some of the banks came out and said they're going to increase their dividends. Mm -hmm. We really think, and what we've done in our portfolio is that we run for real-life money uh, at BMO, both in Canada and the United States, is for the U.S.-centric portfolio, Stuart, we've kind of tilted more toward value and growth at a reasonable price. And that really, really centers on some of the big banks. We think those are exquisitely positioned right now. So that's where you're at. Okay, real fast question. Are bear markets much shorter than bull markets. They if, are. If that, we've had a long bull market. Is this a short bear market? Well, we've had a long bull market. We had a cyclical bull coming out of that cyclical bear, not to throw a bunch of uh, analogies on it. I don't know but what you're talking about. I know, exactly. We had the very shortest bear market in history when we went down for 34 days uh, That's true. In, in 2020. And so we've recovered from that. But we're in a big, giant secular bull. And you can have several cyclical bears within a secular bull. And we are in a secular bull market. Yes, we are. Ten more years to go. What, when, once the bear market starts, and it has started, what's the normal time frame to get that return to the bull market? Well, it's a great question. You know, the average is around 180 to 200 days. That's um, it? Yeah, that's it, to kind of get back in to, to bull market status. We just published a piece about this last week. Uh, but at the end of the day, we think that given that interest rates are still low, Stuart, from a historical perspective, and from, a, from an alternative basis, we believe North American equities are a place to have money, especially given the fact, or pl place money, I'm sorry, especially given the fact that real rates return and fixed income are negative. And we do think that uh, uh, strategies like equity income growth, especially in the United States, but also Canada, make a lot of sense as investors yearn and look for income. There's a lot of great companies in the United States that are growing the dividend over time. Main Point, which I understood, we've already hit bottom. Thank you very much, Brian Bell. <laughs>